Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today is going to be the final mock draft that we're going to do. We're going to do 10 teams. It's going to be standard scoring. Jeff's at the fifth spot. I'm at the ninth spot. So this is going to be the final one we do. And basically our final draft, Jeff, as we just, just yesterday, you know, we'll, we're recording this Sunday night. Just yesterday, Saturday, we finished up our big, big auction draft for the year. And, and feeling pretty good about it? I do, yeah. I, I like the guys I got. I have a few high upside guys, and obviously my keepers were good. How do you feel about it? I feel decent with it. I mean, yeah, I feel decent with it for the situation I was in to start, because this is a three this is three keepers per team. So, you know, sometimes people can start in a little bit of a hole, which I felt like I might have. But I will say, I used Rube Sheets again this on this, this one, and... Rube Sheets was telling me that Saquon Barkley was an $87 value, 87 bucks. So when I drafted him for only $69, I feel like I got a pretty good deal. So that made me feel pretty good. Then I was using, I say Rube Sheets, because we talked about them last week, if you heard about it. They had Mark Ingram at a $30 value. So I went and bid up Mark Ingram to $30 and ended up getting him. And when he comes back, I think that'll be pretty good value. So. That's another one I didn't share with you, Jeff, as we were bidding up on Mark Ingram there. Yep, I just wanted to make sure you didn't get him too cheap. And then I'll, I will say, before this draft's going, we have two and a half minutes yet, but you did get A.J. Green was your big pickup in this because you already had good wide receiver or good court or running backs. And A.J. Green was, Rube Sheets would have valued him at $48. Yeah, good. So you got him 47 They valued him at 48 and that was, you know, it was helpful to use. I used their values all draft, kind of got the feel where the value should be based on our keepers, all that stuff. So if you're in an auction draft, if you have keepers, different kinds of settings, different, you know, different kinds of values for auction drafts, definitely go use Rube Sheets and they will, it, it just, it lets you see the draft differently than you will in the standard value that maybe ESPN or Yahoo throws out there. This is definitely a better way to go. And even and you can use it for snake drafts. I have it up right now. Before we get in there, just so I know I got the values up of the players again yet. Get an idea of who I should be taking. So definitely go check them out, RoopSheets.com. Click on the football auction cheat sheet. You'll be able to go put in all your settings for your team, how many starters, all that good stuff. So minute and a half left. So if I say, Jeff, if anybody thinks we sound a little tired, it's probably because we had a long night with the draft. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got back a few hours ago from Cleveland, where we had the draft. Uh, it was a whole lot of fun. Great to see the guys again. Uh, seven of the ten were there to do the live version, and the other three, obviously, uh, were with us in spirit. But they were doing it from their homes on their computers. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a different type of draft this year. I, you know, we keep preaching about how difficult running backs are to come by. And this was no difference, and hence why Craig had to go big on Barkley because he was still out there and worth it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested to uh, uh, to kind of go through the footage that we gathered. We're going to be coming out with a video about the draft on YouTube, and we had all the guys that were there uh, talk about what they were going to do and how they were going to approach the draft, and then we can break down how that went for everyone. So I think it'll be a cool video, so check that out in the next couple days will be on youtube for fantasy football profit it'll be a fun video to watch and patreon now we have a patreon page if you want to support us go check us out there patreon.com slash fantasy football profit and here goes the draft david johnson went number one which is a surprise i would say yeah a little bit still one of the top yeah, four i said it a million times if if somebody really feels strongly about one of those top four over the others i'm, I'm fine with it nothing it's never it's never gonna bother me I mean, I wouldn't personally go David Johnson there, but shoot, you can do it. We got, we actually got a, quite a few people in this one for once. So that's nice to see. Todd Gurley went two. Le'Veon Bell went three. So Jeff, you have one more before you pick. It's You're expecting Zeke to be taken here. I am. And if that happens, I will be taking Elvin Kamara as I do believe that he should be valued at the fifth spot. And if Zeke is not taken for whatever reason... Um, I will be taking Zeke. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do here. 
I've seen more and more drafts lately where Zeke, sometimes he falls, sometimes he goes one. It's weird. I've seen him at six yesterday in a snake. I've seen him at one. It just, it's these first picks are just, I guess it's whoever somebody gravitates toward for, towards for some reason. And it's yeah. going to. Or they could surprise us and go wide receiver, but no, they did not. You know, it goes Zeke. So you're going to just go Alvin Kamara. No problem there. And there's going to be. Don't love me some Alvin Kamara. Three picks before I'm up. So it's going to be interesting to see who I like. I mean, I'm going to get somebody I like a lot. I know that. I mean, between Barkley, Gordon, Fournette, they're all going to be. Well, Barkley just went here at six. So Gordon Fournette is kind of my ideal spot when I'm towards the back of the first. I love getting Gordon or Fournette. So oh, Kareem and Hunt you wins. will get one. So I'm going to get one if, of them. If Gordon and Fournette went, would you consider taking Antonio Brown or DeAndre Hopkins, or would you still go running back? I would. I I probably actually I think I I, didn't, I might go Antonio Brown if like over Kareem Hunt, who did pick, so it didn't matter. But I would probably have gone Antonio Brown. I'm leaning that way because I think I can get the next, especially in a 10 team, I can get a running back the next time, you know, a really good one, and it doesn't affect me. But this spot, Antonio Brown is out there, but I like Leonard Fournette so much. So, hmm, that's actually an interesting thought here. So if I go Antonio Brown, there's two picks before I pick again. Maybe, you know, I, I'm going to go Fournette yet because my idea here is <clears throat> if I really like a wide receiver, Maybe Hopkins, I get Hopkins coming back here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. With only two picks, you would think that Antonio Brown and perhaps like a Delvin Cook would go. Yeah. And Antonio Brown did just go, so we're about to find out. He, sometimes these people like to go to, if, when Antonio Brown falls there, sometimes they like to go Brown Hopkins. Oh, and he went back home. Okay, so that leaves me go DeAndre Hopkins with an interesting decision. You know what? The thing is, I think I still go running back. I go running back because as much as I do like DeAndre Hopkins, the running backs fall off. And by the next time I pick, who knows what I'm getting? Yes, it's very true as we as we saw many times now. Yeah, so I'm going to go Dalvin Cook. So I started my draft with Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook. And I think I'll be fine filling in wide receivers after that. DeAndre Hopkins was extremely tempting there. But I think, I think running back's the way to go. We keep seeing this every draft we do and how scarce they are. I mean, I hear some people want to do the whole, you know, zig when everybody zags thing you know and go wide receivers try the zero running back route this year because i mean this look at this draft this is just <clears> running back <throat> crazy yeah well this is actually interesting because i have one pick before me and that is actually interesting i think if deandre hopkins is there i would have to take At this him point for the value yeah because after i pick cook christian mccaffrey just went then jordan howard went there's one more pick here oh oh they have yeah, yeah, there went hopkins we had a feeling it probably had <clears> to happen but leaves you with I mean, Julio is there. Michael Thomas is there. Or is it Devontae Freeman? Keenan Allen. Oh, man, I know. There's a lot of guys I love here. That also means there's one of those wide receivers might make it back to you. Between Julio, Thomas, yeah, Adams, Keenan Allen, A.J. Green. It's very possible. It is very possible. Um, since Hopkins won, I'm going to go ahead and I know one of the wide receivers coming back to me I will like. I'm going to go ahead and go Devontae Freeman. I just think it's the safest way to go. Uh but yeah, I would have gone Hopkins there if he if he lasted. But um, I'm surprised he actually lasted that long. I've seen it though a few times of him getting into the second in the in standard. Which I mean, a lot of we've had so many. What, what are we at now? Pick. Um, we've had 16 picks. 13 have been running backs. So man, that's everyone's listening to the go running back strategy. Except now here comes the here comes the wide receiver. So maybe they're not going to last to you. Devonte Adams went. Julio Jones went. So you're going to have two, four, six more picks before you're up. Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, A.J. Green are still all, all out there. Mike Evans as well, which T.Y. Hilton. You'd probably go T.Y. Hilton over Evans if it came to it. I would, yeah. So you're going to get and... somebody if you want him. But A.J. just went after yeah, Michael Thomas, A.J. went. So there went the wide receiver group. Then Derrick Henry. To maybe, start the third. Yeah, maybe a little early for Derrick Henry. Are you picking Derrick Henry over Sean McCoy right now? Even with all the... Problems with McCoy? Uh, I think I, I think I would really? right now. Okay. I just that whole situation kind of scares yeah. me, and I know I would absolutely need them to play. So I do kind of lean away right now. Um, it, I mean, it's unfortunate. Obviously, McCoy is a better pick, but I don't, I don't know what's about to happen with that whole situation. All right, Keenan Allen went, then Rob Gronkowski. One more pick, and then Jeff's up again. 
And it's going to be Aaron Rodgers. So if Aaron Rodgers in early in the third puts Jeff up with, I mean, there's interesting players here. You got some good players to choose from. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to be too hasty, but I feel really it comes down to either it's going to be Mike Evans, T.Y. Hilton, one of those two, or I could even load up on another running back. Joe Mixon is still there. McCoy is there. And that would be before I got to anyone else. But I think T.Y. Hilton is just the better pick here. Um, I get a pretty much a backside number one. So I go T.Y. Hilton in the middle of the third. And hey, nothing wrong with T.Y. Hilton there at all. That's nice to get your number one receiver be T.Y. Hilton in the third. That makes the go running back, running back strategy work out pretty well. And then Joe Mixon went right after you picked Hilton. Two more before I get up. I have to then make a decision if I'm going to pick wide receiver. And probably, I have a plan here that I hope I can execute. I'll let you know after this happens if I was able to pull it off, okay? Here we go. First pick. I'm going Mike Evans right here. All right, Mike Evans. Okay. So, <laughs> What's the second part of that plan? We'll see. <laughs> so LaShawn McCoy went before I picked Evans and Jarek McKinnon went. So I went Mike Evans here. I have a. I really hope uh, Doug Baldwin went. Okay, Doug Baldwin. One more pick before I'm up again. See who Professor Flacco is going to pick. Tyreek Hill, perfect. It worked out exactly how I wanted it to. So, I love this. I love my team. Stephon Diggs. I love it. Mike Evans, Stephon Diggs, my wide receivers. I feel great about this team. Yeah, it's looking really good. Um, I just keep looking at the uh, Professor Flacco. He has four wide receivers. He is going a completely different route than everyone else. I mean, than anyone ever but goes interesting. ever. Yeah. <laughs> And now the run on wide receivers are continues as after Tyreek Hill and Craig got Stefan Diggs, Adam Thielen and Amari Cooper went. And now Royce Freeman, Denver running back, went and I am back on the clock. Yeah, Royce Royce Freeman's definitely been moving up these boards lately. And we saw it in our draft how in, in auction he went for forty, what, forty nine dollars, I believe. People are starting to believe in him. But they're not believing in Ronald Jones, the other rookie out there. Freeman has completely over, overtaken Jones as Jones has struggled, and Freeman's become the new thing. What are you looking at? Wide receiver here? Juju? Yeah, I think I think I have to. Yeah, and I love Juju, so I'm not going to overthink it. Um, I take him. There's a couple really good uh, wide receivers still out there, um, and I just didn't feel secure enough in order to take – I mean, I could have taken Alex Collins, Lamar Miller – but I think Juju is the better pick for me personally after already having two very good running backs. Yep, so yeah, Juju goes for you. Alex Collins went. Lamar Miller went next. I mean, it seems to be, again, we're this is the last one we're doing for the year, but I still feel like our basic strategy we've had this entire offseason of getting those two running backs early, unless you get a value on Antonio Brown or DeAndre Hopkins, is the way to go. Because we're able to get good wide receivers in the third and fourth every time. I think this is just... It's basic strategy. It doesn't seem like it's very, you know, I don't know. It just seems very simple, but it seems to work for me. I don't know. I think it's the way to go. So you're up again, but we'll talk about the light, latest picks. I went Travis Kelsey, Larry Fitzgerald, Kenyon Drake, Jay Ajayi, Deshaun Watson, number two quarterback off the board, then Zach Ertz. Now you're up, Jeff. And this is where you start to be able to just pick who you like. Again, who's on there. Don't worry about position as much sometimes. Exactly. I can get right back into it. There are a few wide receivers. I think maybe they'll get back to me and I can wait on that. I think here for the value, I'm going to take Mark Ingram. I know that he's suspended, but I think uh, with the players I have, I can wait on him to come back and that will really flesh out my team. So I take Mark Ingram in the middle of the fifth. Yeah, I always think I think the fifth for Ingram is a good, good spot. I think it, it, Cause it works out. Yeah, the rest of the, the running backs, you start getting a pretty... Uh, it gets really interesting down there. Uh, you know, Lynch is still there, and then you kind of hit in the hide. But after that, you kind of hit the the rookies. You know, you're talking about Kerryon Johnson or uh, Rashad Penny. Um, so I, I'm not as wild about those guys. So that's why I'm I'm willing to take the uh, the risk on the suspended Mark Ingram. Yeah. So after you pick so after me, yeah, you lay him off as I'm looking for my pick here. I was gonna say. So Craig is up to pick, but after me, it went Marshawn Lynch, then Demarius Thomas. And then Chris Hogan. So Craig is back on the clock. He has two running backs, two wide receivers. He loves both of them. What are you thinking right now as the clock 
ticks down. Brandon Cooks. I love Brandon Cooks. I get him every draft. It feels like the Diggs Cooks connection for me is I have him on every team, except usually they're the a lot of times they're the one two, which even might be a stretch. But to get them as my two three and Brandon Cooks as a three, I don't think you go wrong with that. No, I, I really love that pick. I think especially him being your third. I mean, mm, that is as really great production. Uh, I just there's nothing. I don't. There's no downside to it, really. I feel. No, I don't think so either. I think he's that's just. I think he's going to be great. So now I'm up again after Carry On Johnson went and Carlos Hyde went. I might have picked one of them here. This makes it tough because the running backs left are not anything I'm. I really like. I. There's some players that I hope would last to the next round here for me. I don't know if they will because it's a long ways to wait. So because of that, I am just not going to, you know what? I'm I'm going to go for best value. I'm not just going to pick a position because I think I need it. So I feel like I can take a risk here and go Josh Gordon as my fourth receiver. I like it. I think that is a good place. Yeah, good place to take the risk. Yeah, he'll be my fourth receiver. I don't need, I don't, I feel like if I pick the running back there, I'm picking the running back just because I feel like I need the position and that there's more talent at the wide receiver spot right here. So, yeah, this is kind of the round where I, 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 oh, maybe one more. I think there are still definitely good players here, but I feel like you just go best available, like you were talking about. I don't think you can force it here. And if you wanted to go off script, maybe, and get if you really wanted a QB or tight end, I don't have nearly as much of a problem when you get to this area. Yeah, yeah. If there's if there's a guy you really like here, I get it because I mean a lot of these players are similar. Like the ones who just went off the board after I picked Gordon were Marquise Goodwin, Allen Robinson, Jarvis Landry. So then Jeff, you went with Marvin Jones, solid. You you know does, it makes sense. It's it's you got your you got Juju, you got Marvin. It's just, it's your normal team, Alvin Kamara. <laughs> it really is, yeah. So Marvin Jones being a third wide receiver, especially non PPR leagues. I think it's an absolute steal. I still don't understand why he's going quite this late. Uh, so I feel very good about uh, pretty much my entire team right now. And uh, uh, now it's going to be the question of best available and when do I want to start picking those uh, QB and tight end situation, which looks like there is about to be a tiny run going on right as we speak. Yeah, because after you picked Jones and went Corey Davis, Alshon Jeffrey, but then Tom Brady, Jimmy Graham, Cam Newton. So now that we have four quarterbacks off the board and we also have four tight ends off the board at this point I'm still Jimmy Graham wouldn't be my fourth tight end it'd be probably Greg Olson but hey whatever they want that's fine with me so after Cam Newton and with Deion Lewis Jamal Williams Will Fuller now Jeff is up again three running backs currently three wide receivers so again yeah it is just you get you get the talent here wherever you feel like the most talent is I think at this point yeah and the this is the one. This is the place where I think you can really kind of do whatever you feel is the correct thing because there's no one jumping out at me. So in this case, I'm actually going to go with a tight end that I truly believe in. I'm going Greg Olson in the seventh. Uh, not always do I do this, but I think the players around that are going to go, uh, I, I didn't really care for any of them, so I might as well go with someone I truly believe in. Yeah, and I think you're, you solidify the tight end spot right there. So at this point, when Olsen's off the board and a lot of these guys off the board, I might wait. I don't, I kind of just start waiting at this point. Same thing with quarterback. Russell Wilson just went. So that puts five quarterbacks off the board and the rest of them to me, there's a lot of similar guys. I'll just probably wait. Now I've got to think what to do because I probably shouldn't go a fifth receiver here when I'm up. That's, that is where I start. I should look at position a little bit. Running back is a little weak at this point in the draft. It, it really is. Mm. Yeah. Do you have any, well, uh, I mean, well, you picked twice before I do anyway, not like you're giving anything away. Is there anyone that stands out to you in this running back Honestly, uh, list? Not really, but okay. I'm up here after Trey Burton, Chris Carson went, but okay. I have been, be- I've become a Peyton Barber guy probably because I picked him in our auction, but <laughs> I've become a Peyton Barber guy, but it, I mean, he really has looked good in the, you're hearing everything's right. The problem is I don't know how long that'll last. I don't – it's going to probably be an early season thing. I don't know for sure if it's going to be a full season thing. But you know what? I'm still going to go with him. I like what I've seen. I don't really necessarily love any of the options here. So I'm going to go Barber right now. And Yeah, so you're going 
upside running yeah, back. Yeah, I'm going to go the upside right at this point. And, and see, that's, I mean, I think that's the good and bad part about this section right here, the seventh, eighth round. Our seventh, we went with our gut. I mean, pretty much we looked at the list and it, maybe it doesn't fit necessarily. It, very nice for Craig that he got his third running back, which is needed. But it was also a guy that he's taken a little bit of a risk on and it's worth it in the seventh round. That's not a, that's not a big deal. I think the first five, you have to lock down guaranteed guys. Don't take too much risk. And then after that, this is where you can play around a bit. Yep. And you know what? I am going to go for some more potential upside, which I think I'll go. I'm going to go this one. It might not be great, but in the eighth, why not? Whatever. I'm going to go Sony Michelle and hope that he's the guy that takes over in New England eventually. So my hope is Peyton Barber gets me through the first part of the season. Maybe he gets take, overtaken by Ronald Jones. Sony Michelle by that point might be the back in New England. And he can take me on. He can move into that spot afterwards for me. It's kind of how I think I'm going to play that. So, yeah, I really like that. I think you double up. And Sonny Michelle is he's he's a wild card, but if he does hit, I mean, my gosh, that would be an unbelievable value in the eighth. Yeah, so I I can see I could see him taking over over around the time that Barber's finally overtaken taken by Jones because I still think as much as Jones has been a he's he's been terrible in the preseason. He hasn't looked good. I'm not even a Jones guy. I'm really not. But I feel like at some point he will pass him. So you you would think maybe the move there would have been okay, get Ronald Jones, right? Because he will take over for Barber, but no, I don't you're get then then you're just guaranteeing yourself only one. I want I still might have a chance for two guys here that could be pretty good with Barber and Michelle. So plus I'm not like sold necessarily in the Tampa Bay backfield to think they're going to be amazing. So Drew Brees went, Carson Wentz, Evan Ingram and then Jeff Sammy Watkins. Yeah, I when, once again I'm kind of following your lead. I'm going upside on this. I, I you know, I have to get a fourth wide receiver at some point. I think he is by far the guy that could jump up and be a, uh, you know, higher than this eighth pick that, or eighth round pick that I took. Um so yeah, I like Sammy Watkins. I'm not sure how it's going to really pan out, but you know, you look at the guys around him, we're talking Jordy Nelson, Emmanuel Sanders, Devin Funches. Um I definitely like Sammy Watkins' value over those guys. So after you picked Watkins, it went Burkhead, Crabtree, Golden Tate, Edelman, Ronald Jones, Isaiah Crowell, Marlon Mack, Emmanuel Sanders. Now you're up on the clock again. There's some interesting players I see, actually, that start to become more valuable to me again later on. Or you could go the quarterback route. There's still some quarterbacks we like, I know. Yeah, this wouldn't be a bad place to actually go quarterback. Um Cousins and Luck are still out there. I think those two are the best. And then after that, there's a tiny drop off. I don't have anyone I really love here. So I'm actually going to go Kirk Cousins on this. I know that uh, Andrew Luck, Kirk Cousins is kind of a toss up at this point to me. But I'm going to go with kind of the, the guaranteed Cousins at the moment just because, uh, I mean, I know what to expect. I love his weapons. And I think right now in my mind, I'm edging out Andrew Luck, but that's close. Yeah, so after you pick Cousins, it went Funchess, Jordy Nelson, Kyle Rudolph. I come up on the clock. And then this is where I'm going to go Andrew Luck then. So yeah, I, I kind of figured that. I would have had the same decision as you. It's Luck or Cousins. I probably would have gone Cousins. And Luck next. That's Then Stafford went right after I picked Luck. So everyone got the point there. <laughs> you started that. Yeah. Yep, and I think that was the perfect time to take that as well because now we're looking at Garoppolo, Rivers, Matt Ryan, Roethlisberger. Obviously not bad by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. But, I mean, Kirk Cousins and Andrew Luck are definitely, they were the end of that that tier. So I think we got at the perfect spot and the most value for quarterback that you could have gotten up here. Otherwise, you might as well just wait until, you know, another five rounds pretty much. So Professor Flacco, when they when they make picks here, they just pick them in a row. They just pick two quarterbacks after they picked four running backs, and they started the draft with four receivers. That's uh, that's kind of interesting. I want to unpack that when we get to the end here. <laughs> it's an Cause interesting strategy. It's an interesting looking team. Yeah. All right. So I'm trying to think here what I want to do, and I'm going to go with a player that I do like quite a bit, Aaron Jones. Just another potential upside play here. Again, this won't be any time. This won't be the beginning of the year, but Maybe in the future, later on in the season, I do think Aaron Jones is the better back. And I think he could take over. So taking some, taking a little bit of upside risk here, taking some of these guys, but why not? You know, just a mock draft anyway. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, I love Aaron I, Jones. I like that. I mean, yeah, I totally agree with you on Aaron Jones. I don't know how they'll pan out once again. 
But uh, I, I really do love that that guy's talent as well. So after Jones, it went Robbie Anderson, Chris Thompson. Jacksonville defense went off the board in the tenth. Always Jacksonville's defense always goes so so high. Yeah, I just I just I never can get I never can get behind. No, that. I can't either. Defense changes too much year to year. As much as Jacksonville's going to be good, a lot of defensive scoring is just random. You know, it's, you can hold teams to less points, but the the touchdowns and the fumbles and the sacks, it, it can be sort of random. It's not going to be just guaranteed every time. They might be just a great defense and not get those numbers. And it is the uh, the last fantasy draft that we're going to do. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take Adrian Peterson <laughs> out of respect. He is back in the NFL playing for Washington. He'll probably start as the uh, the number one back there. So I might as well take a chance on him in the 10th. Can't believe just a couple years ago we would be saying, hey, you're going to take Adrian Peterson in the 10th and people might look at it as a reach. <laughs> exactly. It is, yeah, it is, I mean, it's sight unseen too. It is crazy. And if people were like, that's way too high for him. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't disagree necessarily, but he's going to be taken in the next couple. So, All right, you're back on the clock again after Tariq Cohen, Nelson Aguilar, Rams D, Mike Williams, Cooper Cup, Jamison Crowder, Minnesota D, Randall Cobb all went. I was I was kind of looking for Jamison Crowder to come back around to me there. I like Jamison Crowder this year, but it's not going to happen. All right, so uh, let's see here. Who do I want? I'm going to go ahead and. Get my pick in here. I'm actually going to take a chance here and go James All White. Right. If if Craig is wrong about Sony Michelle, I think I will reap the benefit. <laughs> so one of us will be right, one will be wrong. But once again, it's pretty deep now. Eleventh, taking some risk at running back, which you have to do this late. So I'm going to be up here, and I'm just going to again. This is last mock draft. Why not? I'm going to pick guys I like, and I want to see do good. <laughs> We're going off the rails on this last one. Chris Godwin. Maybe it maybe. <laughs> Maybe oh, yeah. a round or two early, not quite sure, but I love Chris Godwin. So I'm picking Chris Godwin there. Craig is angry at me that I took him in the real draft. So now he is making sure that he is sticking his claim in this final mock draft. I was disappointed about that. I did want Chris Godwin on my team. But hey. Yeah. Uh, your your love for Chris Godwin spilled over to me and he was too cheap to pass up. Yeah, he worked out. I just didn't have any money at that point in the auction. <laughs> Spent it all on Saquon Barkley, basically. But Jordan Reed went, so I'm assuming that no, okay, then Baltimore D. Okay, so we're up. I'm up again. I have currently, let's see here. I have five wide receivers, five running backs, one quarterback. I do have no tight end yet. I'm, I could look at the tight end spot here. And you know what? I think this is actually good value. Delaney Walker. Wow. The last mock draft and Craig's Craig's secret <laughs> secret admiration for Delaney Walker finally shines through. It only took an entire offseason for you to pick him on one of your teams. In, in the twelfth round, why not, right? <laughs> no, absolutely. I know he's been there's been um a little bit of injury concern with Delaney Walker, I think, right now going on. But um eh, the twelfth, if it didn't work out, oh well. I'll I would uh just release him if we were playing this thing out. But I think he, I mean, he, if you get him in the 12th round, I think that's always a fine pick. So you're up here after DJ Moore, Chargers, Jimmy Garoppolo went. Yeah, and I'm just going to stack another running back in this one, CJ Anderson. If anything happens to Christian McCaffrey, they will reap you know benefits. Uh, but right now I'm just grabbing three running backs to make sure that I'm all, all solidified, if you will. So we got three more rounds left. So this is always the spot where... If you don't like a guy, do you go with a kicker or a defense or something early or than the last two rounds? And that's a, that's the time I don't mind somebody doing it because a lot of the players at this point become the same to me. Except there is one more guy I like that I hope comes back to me. At least one. Hmm. Yeah, there. Yeah, there's a couple down here. Um, you know, kind of a, a wait and see, especially in the wide receiver range. I don't know if that's who you're talking about. So I- See, after you pick CJ, it went oh there went it went Nick Chubb. That's who I was looking at. Ah, gotcha. So Philly D, Ben Roethlisberger, Legarrette Blunt, Pierre Garcon, Houston defense, Greg Zerline, Calvin Ridley, Nick Chubb. Jeff is up, and I'm not in love, so I am going to go kicker early on this one. Go ahead, lock down Gaskowski, and after that, Sterling Shepard, which uh, went in the 13th, which I actually quite like. And then Pat Mahomes, the Denver defense, and Craig is back on the clock. Yeah, this is uh, hmm, interesting spot. I don't know what to do. 
man, I really don't know what to do at this point in the draft. All right, I'll, uh, I'll do, do you it. lock? I was gonna say, do you lock down kicker defense here? Or do you go for one last guy that you really like? There, I'll go with Powell. He's below. Why not? You know, he's the currently the running the starting running back in new in the, for the Jets right now. So, and I get him four rounds later than Isaiah Crowell went. I don't think I don't think there's much risk there. Nope, pretty much none at all. So, uh, it would be the last one on your on your team. So he would be the first one to get cut for waiver. So what's the hurt? So after I picked, it went Corey Clement, Kenny Stills. Then I come back and do I pick my kicker and I get Justin Tucker. So I don't think you really can go wrong with Justin Tucker. Then it's a kicker run. I know it's exciting to talk about Will Lutz, Harrison Bucker, Robbie Gold. Jeff's up. He could go defense here. He has one more position player he could he could snag here. I'm going to go ahead and grab a, a defense a little higher and then uh... – Coming back around to me, my guess is I can pick kind of whoever I want. It'll be the the wild card, and I'll probably go wide receiver because there's some young guys I still like. And if he probably makes it back to me, well, more kickers going. Jake Elliott and Mason Crosby. I mean, there's still like <laughs> Kenny Galladay out there, Michael Gallup's out there, you know, some of the yeah. Geronimo Allison's out there. Who is – I'll probably take Geronimo Allison. I, you know, I've kind of been hyping him, so – as long as he actually is the guy and it's not the rookies who it kind of looks not to be currently, I think he would be a good pick, especially at the in the 15th. Um, so we're about to see. Alan Hearns went, then Matt Bryant, Marcus Mariota, and we have a few picks before my last yeah, and seeing official like, pick. And Alan Hearns this late, that's again, a, I think another solid one because if someone has to catch the ball there, in Dallas, we don't know for sure if it's not going to be Hearns. I don't really think it's uh never been a big Hearns fan, but there's a there's still a chance he's the number one guy in a decent offense. There is that uh, there is that potential yet. It might not work out. I don't think we necessarily think it's going to be amazing, but why not take him as a flyer at the end of the draft? You're up here after yeah, absolutely Goff, Latavius Murray, Najoku went. Probably going to go um, Geronimo. Yeah, going Geronimo. Finish out the way I started. All right, then it after went after Ty Montgomery, Rob Kelly, Duke Johnson. I'm gonna go. I'll just go Saints defense. I like the Saints defense. I think they're solid. So I'll pick Saints defense. And, and Professor Flacco will finish it out. Who is going to be mystery relevant in this final mock draft? It is going to be Jordan Wilkins. Okay, yeah, I think there's better players than that right. left. But all right, there we go. Final mock draft. What are you thinking about your team? I like it. I'm not so sure about my bench. I went a little off script with the running backs I got, but to start it off with, I have Kirk Cousins leading the charge. Then I have Alvin Kamara and Devontae Freeman, T.Y. Hilton and Juju Smith-Schuster, and then I have Mark Ingram and Marvin Jones as my third running back and third wide receiver with Greg Olson at tight end. So right there, uh, my starters I absolutely love. Then I also have Sammy Watkins on the bench, who uh, I think could be very good. Geronimo Allison is a you know toss up. I, I like the potential there. And then you know the running backs just to try to get some depth. You're taking some guesses, but C.J. Anderson, James White, and Adrian Peterson, no one that I'm absolutely in love with. But I think it's uh, you know a couple guys that you have to take a chance at. So what do you think about yours? You know I like my start of my team, so I kind of then decided to pick the guys I liked. But I love having Fournette and Cook up there at the top. I think. It's hard to go wrong when you have those two in your starting lineup every week. And then I got Mike Evans, Diggs, Cooks, who I love all three of those guys. I know there's definitely some risk-reward there. They might not all pan out at all. None of them might pan out. Who knows? But I think there is a potential that they are really, really good. So if it hits, it hits well for me. But it could go go wrong. I know this team could go wrong. Josh Gordon, he's in the same thing. Peyton Barber then. Sony Michelle, Andrew Luck, Aaron Jones, Chris Godwin. I want a lot of those kind of guys that if, you know, if 75% of them hit, this team is going to be really good, I feel like. But there is also a pretty good chance that this is a, none of these guys hit. And then this is a bottom of the bottom of the league team, which isn't necessarily what I like to do sometimes, but hey, why not take a little risk right now? Yeah, and uh, I mean, personally, I like it. I like that you actually stacked. You went two, you were solidified at running back, and then Mike Evans, Diggs, Cooks, and Gordon right in a row. 
Um, actually, I think between them, you're definitely going to have three guys that you can play and will do very, very well. I think Brandon Cook, and that, what I love about this too, I know you're not so sure who will hit and who won't, but you know, if they don't, like if Stefan Diggs doesn't actually do what everyone thinks he's going to do, it doesn't mean he's going to be bad. It just means he's not going to be a borderline number one wide receiver, which is a lot to ask anyway. And that's kind of the same for Mike Evans. I think Brian Cooks is the safe as they come. And then Josh Gordon is the real wild, wild card, but we all know what he's capable of. So I really like the uh, the upside of your team. So I just threw us through the rankings real quick and no, they pretty much put us identical. We think we're about identical teams. We're kind of, uh, they say we're like a good, you know, good borderline playoff team. So each of us, so not bad. You know, as long as you get that have a chance to make some waiver wire moves. And that's really what the key is going to be is the waiver wire moves. Get yourself a good base of a team, but then the waiver wire is really, it's going to be where it's at, which shoot next week. We're already doing our first waiver wire show before, before week one. Can't believe it's already that time. Oh yeah. And that's where the fun really begins. <laughs> where you, you get to actually take a look at teams and who has what and who's going to play and injuries. And uh, I tell you, I mean, Craig will definitely vouch for this, but I, I believe that championships are kind of won and lost in the waiver, uh, the waiver world. Yep. But well, that'll do it for the final mock draft of the year. I think tomorrow's episode, we're going to do our preseason awards, which is always a fun episode. Basically think who we think might be the MVP, who's going to be a bust, all kinds of good stuff. Breakout player, all fun stuff like that. We'll have that tomorrow. See if we can hit any of these, any of them last year. Yeah, we did okay. I think I called Jordan Howard a bust. Didn't. <laughs> that, that's all right. I thought Russell Wilson was overrated too. <laughs> we'll have some wrong, but I think we're going to hit more more right than we will have wrong. So we'll have that tomorrow. We'll talk to you guys then. 